What is going on guys? It is your boy Cash and before we get into the debacle of Adrian vs. Basker as far as the next character guide again you guys can let me know I haven't gotten too many responses. I got one person for Adrian. Shout out to you. You're a hero But what we're gonna do today is actually go over the White Knights vs. Dark Knights Awakened Essence Dungeon Now I actually didn't get to do it every time around because I was like come on I thought everyone know how to do this kind of thing and what we're going to be doing here is showing you how much you get when you win for some people that don't know if it's even worth it don't even bother and i'm going to be showing you my team that i'm successful with now i'm just pretty much bringing in deeps um but more specifically jiban yan here is my aoe -er. he's going to help save the world ashley is ashley and momo are my single target dps's and you kind of need a tank i use electric because she's really really good you need something to just soak up some of the damage the best thing about Electra is that she can pretty much the protection that she gives to everyone and for the fact that she can't die instantly they do do decent amount of damage I was kind of surprised how much damage they did when this was first introduced so you do need someone to take up the damage and Electra is pretty much the best because of her her passive as far as the helper unit that you want to bring in I kind of just been bringing in Adrian because he's brand new and he soaks up a little bit too much damage i think what most people do is they usually go like double ashley ashley in the leader slot anything that you feel comfortable with as far as that you're going to be able to dish out a, a lot of damage dps is very important as long as you have a good tank and then if you want to heal the tank i'm not going to be healing electra here because my strat it will probably be dead before that makes a difference but if i wanted to do that i would probably take out maybe like momo Go double people. We're gonna, I'm going to try here. This is going to be the cop that I'm going to try. It might fail because technically I was running two tanks before. So if anything, I would go get another Electra. Two tanks were really, really good at mitigating the damage. But let's break down each little aspect of this fight. Now, if you guys don't know, see, Rebecca goes first. They're really fast. You see their whole team is going first. That's kind of like why I like Electra is that she's going to eat up all of that. And she also reflects, so as you can see, they're taking multiple turns, they're dealing a lot of damage to themselves. The resolve here gets procced, but if you don't have Electra, you need someone that can take all those hits. My characters are not built on speed, so that's why they're outspeeding me. Now, all of them are relatively their normal selves, so Ramu has two lives. She will revive two characters. Her S3 is not maxed in this, but she's gonna revive at least two characters, so just keep that in mind. They're not gonna come back with a lot of health. She comes back with full health. And then Marduk is a little bit of a pain to deal with. So that's why you do want to have good DPS because you don't want to be sitting here for too long because they'll start alting you like crazy and you do not want that to happen. So let's first look at this little passive here. Increases damage dealt if there are only three allies or less including the effective hero and guarantees multi-strike. Becomes immune to engraving of destruction and looming death. You know, the easy way out. Takes more damage from quadruple target attacks. So the white knights all are based kind of like on this. So that's why I do have Jibanya on here is that he's going to pretty much be able to clear them most of the time. And that's pretty much why he's here. So we're just going to poke at Ramu. They're still going to hit that back. As you can see, they're still hitting her because of the protection. Going to use the S2 on Ashley. I usually like to do it, especially if I'm running double Ashley. I S2 them in the beginning. So the first one goes up and then the second one does damage just like that. They're all safe and we're just gonna mow them down. S3 on Jibanyan does a decent amount of damage, kills the Ramu. And as you can see, they still can't <laughs> kill her. And that's all she's really there for. It, for that first round, it's kind of, kind of hard to get by it in my opinion because they start doing a lot. They have a lot of AOE in that round. They also have a lot of AOE in this round as well, which is kind of sucks. Usually I have Electra still in Resolve. So I didn't kill them quick enough in my opinion. So now we have these guys. The Dark Knights pass it a little bit differently. They have the Berserk Rage, they have Composure. Well, actually has Composure. These guys don't have Composure, right? So let's look at theirs, right? Now they have the Berserk Rage upon taking a certain number of attacks. I don't really know how many attacks there are. Usually they're dead before that. They're not like super tanky or anything. They're also immune to Mental Seal and Weaken. Affected heroes immediately Berserk Rage upon revive. So the only person that can revive is Diamos. So that's why you'd want to kill him. Mary's passive definitely allows her to do it. So when you do kill her once, she will come back and then she will be berserked. These two, however, that's not the case. So one of my things that I suggest to do is to pretty much go for Daimos, take him out. He also has his S3, which will give you that stupid, annoying 
See, he also has a revive. He's not gonna Berserk Rage because he's just not built that way for some reason. So boom, he's dead. And then we kind of like this. This is very easy round for, for my setup because we have a lot of DPS. So we're gonna pretty much just swim there. I'm gonna S3 this again, and that's gonna kill them off. So that's like, I would say the privilege run, but pretty much what you wanna do there is kill Dimos. This is very important actually. This is probably the most important decision that you're gonna have to do. But let me speak on the second stage is that you wanna kill Dimos first because he will keep reviving. His S3 has a revive on it. So he'll keep reviving them. He'll keep giving them the Vila Phantasm and you just don't wanna deal with that. It, it makes it way too hectic. Mary and Nemesis both have AOE anti-revive and it's gonna destroy your team. And then of course they have Ashley in there who's doing a decent amount of damage and he's just a pain. So just just avoid that situation by killing off Dynamos first and then slowly taking them out. They're all attack types. They're not like Murdoch. I actually fear Murdoch more because he's a tank. So he has more tanky stats. He's a little bit harder to take out and he still does a lot of damage because of the mode that it's in. Now, speaking of this third stage, the reason why they both have them here, they actually die in one hit, is you are choosing what fight you want to do. So depending on your team comp, you should pretty much decide whether you want to go with Damien's route, which is actually, if you have AOE on your team, it's a little bit easier for you to do. Or if you want to go Ashley's route, which is, a, I think if I remember correctly, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you both, but I remember correctly, it's about having penetration damage or something like that. So we're going to go with Ashley's route because his route is actually, in my opinion, harder. It's a harder route. So whoever you kill first, doesn't matter, as you can see, it doesn't matter who comes out second. This is what pops out. And it's gonna be Ashley and Wise or Weez. Now I'm saying Wise like it's Ruby. As you can see here, inflicts an Ebony Wound, as we all know, to two adjacent enemies when attacking, enemies that have Ebony Wound. Greatly increases evasion if affected. Hero has imbued magic. Consumes one imbued magic when he invades. Now you guys are like, how does he, he already has two of them. <laughs> no, he has three, sorry. And he also has composure. So the longer this fight takes, the worse off it is for you. He's gonna be doing the imbued magic, enhances Ashley with imbued magic, dealing damage is different when there's a shield, except with penetration attacks. So as you can see, he has a really big shield here. Hold on, if I can, yeah, I'm gonna hit it right now. You can see. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that was, that was not correct. Did they nerf this? Oh my God, I think they nerfed it. Um, before he would not die that easily. That's actually completely jaded. He used to not die that easily, I promise you. But pretty much his shield would be really, really, really hard to break through. And unless you have penetration, I feel like, but when you have penetration, but if you do, it's very easy. You kill him first so he doesn't get any more stacks. As you're gonna see here, he keeps evading. Well, he has a chance to evade, sorry. That's actually how it works. He's a little hard to kill, as you can see. He's tanky. And he plays the same way as Ashley does. Multi-striking and counter-striking all day. What's weird is that he has the imbue magic. It says it's plus three. I feel like this is a little bit glitched because it's supposed to go away over time, but it's not. So maybe Ashley is the easiest route nowadays. Uh, but Damien was always the easiest route in my opinion. So I'm gonna show you guys Damien right after this. Cause he's gonna die. I don't think I need to show you that he's gonna die. So I'm gonna abandon this. This is my last thing for the day. Uh, I've been refreshing this. So let me just abandon this real quick and I'm gonna come back to that point. And for transparency, I made sure that I got another Ashley so it's not like a crazy different experience. Everything is gonna pretty much work out the same and I'll see you guys at stage three. All right, we are back. And that second stage definitely feels easier. I feel like they did nerf this and I think that uh, Wise or Wheeze Wizard Wiz, so I'm gonna call Wiz, his name is Wiz. So I feel like he was also nerfed as well. I don't think he's supposed to be that squishy. He was never that squishy unless you hit him with penetration. Now we're gonna kill Damien first. <laughs> and I like how he always multi-strikes, he multi-strikes on both. So now you're gonna fight this version of it. So it's a little bit different. Now this Christian here, he gives, when he dies, he gives a Buster Spear to Damien, takes more damage from quadruple target attacks. And then we also have Tesla here, who's doing her same thing. When she dies, she also gives a thing, but she also spawns, it doesn't tell you, but she spawns little robots. Another reason why you want AOE. And then we finally have Damien. Removes damage absorptions from all enemies, which is his awakened state thing. Uh, takes more damage from quadruple attacks. Decreases the damage taken if there are at least three or more surviving allies, including him. Inflicts additional damage when attacking if there are two or more Buster Spears. So that's 
So if they both die, he gets the buff spirits, he's gonna do more damage. Now, if you don't want them to spawn too many of the units, you will kill Tesla. Like you can kill any of them, they don't revive or anything. So this one, you can actually just tough it out, if I'm being honest with you. Every time I've done it, like at least for my first clears, if your guys are struggling, I definitely suggest this route. As long as you have a decent amount of AOE clear and some healing, you can actually just tough it out. You don't have to have like crazy, crazy stuff around. You can even clear the things out. Sometimes I'll clear these out. If I don't want them to keep spawning enemies, I'll just kill out Tesla. The little guys die really easily, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Oh, that kind of sucks. So I'll just kill him because pretty much he doesn't get the busted spears until they die. And he's relatively easy to kill. You do have to kill all of them though, so just keep that in mind. You don't kill Damien and then it all stops, so. So I just killed him, he gets a buster spear, all good. And they're not doing too many crazy damage. Meanwhile, Ashley, he does have, a, he has like an AOE stun, well he has a cone stun, and yeah, it's a little bit harder to deal with in my opinion. And if you can't kill Wiz quick enough, then yes, he, he just keeps giving him a shield over and over and over again. It's actually nuts. And then you can't die, like he gives himself a shield, and then he also gives Ashley like the evasion, and it's just really hard to deal with. This on the other hand, there's nothing but he, Damien just does DPS, so look at that, 1300. He just did 1300 with that one attack on this Ashley, on my Ashley actually. Not too crazy, he has one Buster Spear though, but 1300. Oh wait, I'm actually in some doo-doo right now. <laughs> I'm in some doo-doo. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna kill them all here and then I'll have two. Hopefully he'll hit Ashley, he doesn't dodge it or anything. And then you can kind of see how much damage he does. See, that was, what was that? Three, four hits of 1300? That's not much. Even when he has two Buster Spears, he's not gonna do too much damage. I don't have a healer, so I actually might die here because uh, I have nothing to give me uh, smug. Yeah, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna do something special. So we're gonna try to actually go here. All fire. <laughs> this is actually one of my old PvP teams. You can tank a decent amount of it, but at the same time, you have to really realize that leaving these guys up for too long is actually just not good. All right, here we go. As you can see, a lot better because Cynthia does a lot of damage. Damien does a lot of damage. Majibanyan does damage. Electra is a tank, but she does good damage as well. You need DPS. Um, you do not want to stay in that fight for too long. Though, I will still stick by that you can stay in this portion. I hate this for you. There we go. You can stay in this portion of Damien's fight for a decent amount of time. Heal me, dang it. Oh my god, not getting the heal procs. Everyone's dying. Yeah, she has to die. There we go. Nice and slow and steady. Oh, she got stunned. That's fine. We're going to heal her up. There we go. Keep it going. Now the robots won't spawn anymore. Slow and steady. There we go. Do some good damage on him. Finally get the heal proc, jeez. Not so pretty. My characters don't do crazy damage or anything like that. Not the ones that I picked. The first team that I put in there was able to DPS it pretty quickly. Uh, I just wanted to show you, you know, maybe not so much of, oh, this is the best. Cause I feel like I know that that's gonna calm people. Like, well, I don't have characters as strong as that. Now be mindful, that's why I'm trying to say you do need to do damage. Like don't think that you can sit here and bring in non-upgraded units. No, this is this is definitely somewhat difficult. You can't bring in like fodder units or runes or, or character without maxed out runes or not maxed out, I shouldn't say. I always keep mine at plus nine. I don't usually go further than that. You don't really need to. Plus nine is pretty good on most of your characters. Make sure that they're ruined de decently. They can do the job that they're meant to do and then use a friend unit to fill in the gap of what you're not doing. So we use a friend unit here for extra DPS, but if you need a tank, bring in a tank, but make sure everyone else is like DPS and maybe one healer. You can go full DPS, but you have to know that you are going to need to kill them very quickly. So if you're going full B DPS, that's probably for people with way higher rune quality i think that's the best word to say rune quality their rune quality is very high so they can go in there they'll probably sweep the first one because they're weak to aoe they'll have a very fast aoe cleave the second one you can almost do the same thing you can aoe cleave them too 
as you saw me do and then the third one you just pick your poison now the ashley one definitely seems easier right now damien used to be easier but now damien damien seems like i don't know they look like they have more health or something like that they look like they buffed that and nerfed ashley but you just pick your poison that's why i showed you both is that you should figure out which one is better for the team comp that you brought in you don't really need to cater to either or for the end just know that you at least have a choice so if you think that you can burst whiz and then just work on ashley then do so if you think that you will have a slower comp that has more aoe ish go for damien all up to you at the end of the day once you do that you will get four awakened essence and if you reset the dungeon it's you can reset it three times so that's 12 and then that's just how it works so 12 a day is pretty good and then each day that you do it it's obviously a little that's why I kept resetting it. That's my last one. So for each retry, it's three of your dungeon tickets. So it's a little hefty, but if you keep doing it, I don't know how long the Awaken Essence thing is here. So let's just say you do it for a week. So that's seven days. Seven times 12 is 84. So if you keep doing this for an entirety of a week, you will have 84 Awaken Essence. That's close to 100. Close enough, right? For most of us that really want it. Obviously, you need 300 in order just to get a maxed out awakened character so just keep that in mind yep this is still 300 this is why i still have two i have 216 right now i'm just waiting till i hit 300 and then i'll choose between probably elizabeth or karen that's what i'm looking at right now and but just keep that in mind that you should pretty much i've said this before save until you have 300 so you can make a decision when you actually can finish it you don't want to end up like my damien here who's like part way through but then i was like ah something else came out so yeah just wait there's no reason not to wait so yeah just be patient if you want to be even more patient than that then feel free to just be more patient you don't have to waste it it's going to dig into your crystals because dungeon tickets come dungeon tickets are 10 crystals for one which you should never do because you can get 10 and save 10 crystals for you know 90. so if it takes three to recharge for each one so that's six every day that you would have to be able to be willing to spend six every day and then you know you'd have to do the math uh you know what i'll be nice i'll put the math on the left side of the screen so six every day and for a week that's 42 dungeon tickets which mean you would need at least five because you, as you can see there are multiples of 10 you would need at least five sets of it to get 50 dungeon tickets so that will be five multiply by 90 which is going to be 450 crystals and as you can see i don't even have that right now and that's just for a week if this is a two week event which i think it only usually lasts for a week so if this is a two week event then that's 900 crystals you would be dedicating to this but you also if you did it for two weeks straight you'll end up with 168 awakened essences instead so that's more up to you on how fast you want to jump your progress you're pretty much taking your crystal resources and dumping it into awakening essence resources so that's up to you guys. Let me know what you guys are gonna do. I would appreciate to know. It would be fun to know what uh, what the people out there, what decision you guys are making. But there's only one last thing that I need to tell you and that every day in the casino is your lucky day and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah, one more time. Last time, I promise. Basker or Adrian in the comment section below as well. Let me know.